For tapes, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the 2018 Memorial Day Teaching and Deliverance Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Camp in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Saturday afternoon, May the 26th, 2018. Nikki Pinson is the speaker of this service teaching on No Other Foundation. Hallelujah. You know, every one of us has to seek God for ourselves. Amen. We have to seek God for ourselves. Praise God. The, the five wise persons told those five foolish persons, you're just going to have to go get your own one. You can't, you can't have ours. Praise God. Hallelujah. you got to get your own. Praise God. Hallelujah. They should have had it. Messed up, didn't they? Oh, my. Don't even start the day without his oil. Somebody said, is it that serious? Do you really... You really need the Holy Spirit that much? He said, well, I wouldn't even go to the post office without the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I was coming back from Mexico one night, about 12.30 at night, and a black cow on the road. And it's dark. And, uh, you know, I didn't have time to repent. <laughs> didn't have time to get everything right. You know, you got to be right. Praise God. Amen. you got to be right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's here. Everyone, Father. Whatever position, wherever we came from, wherever we're going back to, precious souls, Lord, precious souls. Thank you, Lord. God, we ask that your Holy Spirit be upon us and anoint us. In the wonderful, wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. And um, I want to remind you, we have the books back there. All the, all the pride, whatever you give for it goes to the, to the camp here, laying down the flesh. That's by my wife. Overcomer's Manual. This is the one we, we pass it out. You know, uh, you know how to quit sinning? Quit making provision for your flesh. That's what the Scripture says. Quit making provision. That's in there, the power of God. And then growing up in the Christ and all things says, warning this material could change your life forever. And it's the truth. Praise God. So, if, if you'd like to give us your email address, my wife would take it. Got a few from you. And uh, we don't solicit money. Praise God. But we're going to try to minister to you. Um, thank you, Lord. Praise God. Well, we're going to talk about no other foundation. And Lord helping us won't go off on too many side streets here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's just wait on the Holy Spirit. Praise God. This is His. This is, it's His church. It's His meeting. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Praise your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. How, how's your prayer life? How's your private worship? How's that going? Does it even exist? Very difficult to come to a gathering and be able to worship a God you haven't been worshiping and been talking to Him. You know, some people think they're going to heaven to be with a, with a Christ they don't even talk to. They don't even have any kind of relationship with Him. But Mama will be there. Oh, you know Mama. She don't know Jesus. Uh, we're not going to heaven to see Mama. You're not. If that's your motive or your mansion over deal talk, not good. 
So in love with Jesus, we want to see Him face to face. Be in His presence forever. Praise God. Let me, let me say that. that. That starts in this life. You, can, you don't wait till you... Well, I get that. No, it better be now. You better have eternal life now. Amen. And we can have it. If I say something to you and it's hard or seems offensive, fix it. <laughs> we just need to fix it. Praise God. Quit getting mad or angry or offended. Jesus said, blessed are those that are not offended in me. Praise God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's field. You are God's building. I'm going to put a little side issue here. Um, why did Jesus die? Most people, the answer would be, he died for me. And that is true. But, but here it is. Jesus died to please the Father. First. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And this Son, to please His Father, you can read that in Philippians chapter 2, this Son, to please His Father, was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. So we have to understand that first He did it to please His Father. And we get the benefit of it, praise God. Not that Christ doesn't love us, He does. Now, we're not labors apart from God. He says labors of, together with God, not apart from God. Making decisions for God, doing things for God, laboring for God. Be surprised how many churches uh, could just, they could just go on without Christ. I mean, He's not even in there. Have been doing it for a long time. I heard a. a pastor was in Florida and went to a church and wanted to go to church on Sunday morning. Went there. Some big, beautiful edifice. A handful of people there. Dead in the door now. And, and, but they bragged and said, you know, we've got enough money and trust fund to do this for another hundred years. Oh, praise God. We're not labors apart from God. Uh, making decisions for God. Oh, there's a lot of that going on. We do it in our daily lives. Are doing things for God. Are laboring for God. Let me just tell you, God doesn't need anything from us. In Psalm 50.12, the Lord expresses this fact, If I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine in the fullness thereof. Job 41.11, the Lord reminds us, Who has given to me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. God's looking for a person, a people, a body of people, not to do things for Him, but a people that He can work through. That He can work through. God does not want what we can do for Him. Rather, God wants us. I mentioned earlier, uh, bringing our, you know, bring your gifts to Him, your giftings, your talents, and all that. Uh, he doesn't need them. And uh, let me let me say this: our gifts, our talents, our abilities are nothing compared to what the Holy Spirit could do to a person. Not by my, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Folks, the Holy Spirit can do more for you in ten seconds than a whole herd of preachers could ever do for you in a lifetime. I will say that one word from God can change your life. One word. There's a lady one time visited our church. I'd known her years before. She came and visited and uh, she lived quite a distance from us but she was standing in the prayer line on that side. I remember that. And I don't even know what I, exactly I gave her a word from the Lord. Giving a word from the Lord, what is that? It's to hear what He's saying and repeat it. That's all it is. Don't add to it. Don't take away if God doesn't give you a word for someone, don't fake it. Bless them, whatever, but you know. I know myself, I have to answer to God for whatever I say to someone. I put my head down on that pillow, I want to know I'm right. I wasn't making merchandise of God's people. I wasn't telling them something they wanted to hear. Um, I was here one time, on one camp, 
And uh, I was praying for people, and from this side to the middle, it was all good. Oh, praise God. God, this is good. I was enjoying what the Lord is saying to people. Right there, it just changed from the other all the way down. It wasn't, it wasn't so good. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, one time I was praying for a teenage girl in our church. Her mother was standing beside her, and the Lord told me something. It wasn't good. I said, oh my, if I say that, they'll leave or whatever. You know, I don't know what. That mom might slap me. I don't know. <laughs> but I obeyed God. And as I was telling her what the Lord said, she just broke in tears. You know, just in tears. I was uh, one time in the jail. We were about to, we were leaving and shaking hands with the guys. I, I, I like to be a good to them, respectful to them. Uh, but for the grace of God, there, there I'd be, or you'd be. And and I, I, I realize this: a lot of the guys in jail just got caught. That's all. They got caught. Not saying they didn't do something wrong, but they got caught. There's a lot more out there that didn't. And uh, uh, other issues like how much money you got to pay a lawyer and who you know and things like that. I mean, that's the truth, folks. Corruption is so thorough and full in this nation. Corruption. Anyway, we don't go that way. And so I, I, I shook his hand, asked his name. His name was Travis. The only time I ever saw him. And and uh, I turned to walk away, and the Lord said, "Go back and pray for him." I turned around, went back to him. I said, "I want to pray for." Him. I took his hand. He's looking around like, "Wow, well, I don't know." You know. I began to pray for him, and the, uh, I had my eyes open. Now he's standing there, just just tough looking and whatever. And I, I began to. Pray for him, and the Lord said, "You're scared, you're frightened, you're afraid, you're terrified." I go, "Oh!" And I open my eyes, and he's trembling like a leaf. You know, this got out of him is what it was. And uh, he said, "How'd you know that?" I said, "I didn't know, but God knows." See, God knows. And I said, "And God also wants you to know that He cares." Praise God, He cares. Well, so that's all that. That's what it is. Uh, Paul, um, Paul in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, he said, well, in the last part of 12, he said, you know, desire the gifts, seek earnestly. And then in chapter 14, he says, desire spiritual, spiritual gifts especially that you may prophesy. Now, 12 says, seek earnestly the best gifts, which is the best gift. Well, if the best gift is a gift, gift that's needed at that time. And I want to tell you this, the nine, I'm, not, I'm talking about the nine gifts in, in chapter 12. I'm not talking about the gift of baking cakes and, and babysitting and all that. I'm not talking about that. Find your gifts, you know, take a questionnaire, you fill it out, you know, and then if they feed it and the computer tells you what your gifts are. Oh, my God, run from that. <laughs> that is so whatever. And uh, so I was, uh, it's in, it's in, we can seek these gifts. And I, from reading chapter 14, you almost come to the conclusion that Paul felt like prophecy was the best gift. And the whole chapter 14 deals with speaking in tongues for whatever purpose. There's many purposes for speaking in tongues. Chapter um, for speaking in tongues, the other is prophesying. He said it, you know, he said, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all, but in, when you're dealing with people, uh, you, they need to be able to understand you. Now, that he's not saying you shouldn't speak in tongues. He said if you do, make sure it's interpreted. Make sure it's interpreted. Let me say, every time you speak in tongues, it's it's a miracle. Unless somebody taught you to do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, I, I've seen some of them that say, now I'm going to count to three. And whatever comes in your mind, you say it, but you, it can't be in your, like English, it can't be. So whatever, you know. And so they do it. Oh, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. No, sir. Uh-uh. You, you, the Holy Spirit comes in, you'll know it, He came in. Mm-hmm. Nobody has to tell you. You'll know. Oh, my. I, if we ask for hands, I, I, how many know exactly when and where? You know. You remember. Praise God. I was 12 years old. I remember what that was. Praise God. I, know, I could tell you, show you where I stand. Praise God. I can't say that about when I got saved. It's, it's difficult to say that when you're raised in church all your life. Actually, I got saved every Sunday night. I needed to. I did, you know. But that, in my young mind, you know, that's uh, I was probably more repenting, but 
That's what I understood. Thank God for it, though. Uh, so, the gift of prophecy, how, how important is there's He said the purpose of prophecy is to comfort, to exhort, and to edify, build up. That's Now, the office of a prophet goes much deeper. And the purpose of a prophet is to out things, so to speak. Bring things to light, what must be dealt with. Isn't that what the Old Testament prophets are doing and the New Testament prophets? And so you can prophesy and not be have the office of a prophet, but a, one that's in the office of a prophet must be able to prophesy. You don't have the gift, praise God. Gifts are wonderful. Seek them. And I want to tell you this. If he says, seek earnestly the best gift, and I'm not doing it, then what am I doing? I, I'm rebelling. I'm, diso- I'm being disobedient. And it's a sad thing that in the church, so much is replaced, all of that, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you're going to church with no gifts are ever manifested, why are you there? Unless God just absolutely tells you to be there. But why are you there? I hear churches sometimes in their uh, their mainline maybe denominations, and 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 there's nothing wrong with that. My wife was raised a Lutheran. We just came from Wisconsin. Now here, in, I don't know in Texas, uh, there's a Baptist church on every corner, you know, maybe two. <laughs> Up there, it's a Lutheran church on every corner, maybe two. You know, I mean, there's everywhere. But anyway, uh, they, they'll. We used to have a church down the street from us. I won't tell you what it was, but they said, "Oh, they 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 they're about, they're just about Pentecostal. They're raising their hands, you know, and they're clapping their hands, and and they really, you know." So they, I went down there for their Christmas program. They asked me. They actually, they didn't have a pastor. They wanted me to say something for them. So I went down there, and sure enough, they got their hands up and they're looking around like this, you know, and and then later on they had a business meeting and and uh, canceled out the clapping hand said, no, we're not doing that here. It, whatever. But praise God. So I, I'm, I'm just saying, find a church where the Spirit of God is free. The more you open up a church, though, to that, the more silly stuff you get. You know that? And uh, the more the Holy Spirit moves, the more the devil will show up. I know that's true. And he'll try to show up the last minute the last minute to basically distract and diffuse and cancel out everything that was being the Holy Spirit was doing. But and that that's not to say be afraid. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit moving. Um, there was a denomination sprang up in in our area called Church on the Rock. Larry Lee, if any of you ever huge building there, Rockfall, Texas. And before you could give a utterance in tongues, a message in tongues, a message in tongues is, is simply a prophecy in a language you never learned that needs to be interpreted. That's, that's what it is. It's a prophecy, but it's in another language. You say, well, why does God do that? Well, in, in chapter 14, he said that it's a sign to unbelievers. Now, Smith Wigglesworth at one t- in, in a lot of books over there. The first book I ever read, I didn't like to read. I hated school. I don't know what I hated worse, but it was, it was probably the worst. And uh, But I was going to Bible school, and, and that was God. And a lady in the church gave me, a, it's over there, Every Increase in Faith gave me that book. And I read that and said, oh my. I, and, and from then on I read, you know, just reading that book. But uh, they were in a, in a person's home, and this man came in that knew Greek and Hebrew. And he got over, they were having a prayer meeting. He got over by the fireplace and he was praying. And a young person started praying in, in Hebrew. He thought, well, they know Hebrew, you know. So he said, ask him a question. He was like, what? You know? But uh, telling him to get right with God. That was what was being said. Then so he moved over to the other side and someone, it was in Greek. Someone was speaking in Greek and same thing. Well, he absenced himself from there, went to his room and got right with God. You know, because that's what God was saying. It's beautiful. I tell you, I guess the Holy Spirit is so exciting. A whole lot more exciting than these light shows in churches and the 
and 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 all that in the smoke machine and all that. My goodness, that's that's chaff, that's junk. Why do you want that when you can have the exciting gifts of the Holy Spirit operating? Hallelujah, that changes lives. Well, praise God. Uh, I'm going to say this before I, I'm, I move on from there. Usually, they're not gifts. Usually, there'll always be two of them working together. Almost always two of them in tandem. You don't. You rarely ever would see one. And many, uh, several of the gifts have to operate through the gift of prophecy. They they have to, and because they've got to be expressed. But you'll usually see more than one. This church on the rock had told them that you couldn't give an utterance unless you first went and okayed it with the elders. Well, we believe in it being spontaneous, you know, right then. And then, what does is, what is Paul say? On the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I'm going to add that. Paul's not expressing his mind. I really get tired because of, well, Paul said this so that he'll get this reaction. No, he didn't. He was, in, he was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So was Christ. Well, Christ did this because he wanted to get this. No. Jesus said, I never say anything I don't hear my Father say. I never do anything I don't uh, see Him do it. How, how does He see Him doing it? The Holy Spirit showing it to Him. Just like the Holy Spirit showed Him that His disciples were in trouble out there on the Sea of Galilee. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. Hey, parents, the Holy Spirit will show you what your kids are doing. Amen. I'm going to I will forget where I was at, but anyway, back to this. <laughs> one, one time, my late wife, one time, one of our sons is going to go out on a date. And he came in to take a shower. My wife said, you need to go look in his trunk. I said, why? Well, you need to. I feel like you need to go look in his trunk. And I went and looked in his trunk. I, his key, he left his key on the table. And it is all kinds of beer in there, you know, cases of beer. That was, that was God. You know, parents, you need that. And because you were a child one time and you know how good you were at hiding things. <laughs> and so what I did is I got it all, brought it in and stacked it on the table while he's taking a shower. <laughs> I went, it's priceless to look on his face, but it's priceless. <laughs> I said, you load that in my truck. We went down in the woods and... Uh, there was a crossing through one of the creeks of concrete and I made him bust every bottle on that concrete. Uh, praise God. There was a, a, a lady, a black lady evangelist that she discovered her son's pornography. <laughs> and so he, while he's at school, she takes it off, cuts every picture out and puts it on the walls. And when he walks in, he's crying and begging her to take him down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not only will he show you what they're doing, he'll give you creative ways to do it. <laughs> so, praise God. We believe it being spontaneous. And then he said, go ahead, allow it. And then the other prophets judge. See? And if that's really happening, then these people that are just talking off the top of their head, just like they teach, try to teach you speaking tongues off the top of your head, I'm going to tell you where it comes from. It comes from in here. It doesn't come from here. Tongues, speaking the language you never learned by the Holy Spirit comes from here. It doesn't come from here. And uh, But anyway, so uh, they would judge. if that was happening, it stopped some of that that's going on. Should you confront him? What did Peter do? What did Paul do with Peter? Anybody know what Paul did with Peter? Got it. Got in his face. Said, "You're doing wrong. You're doing wrong." Praise God. Well, but we could ex almost expect that from Paul because you read in in Galatians chapter one and two how that he said, "My gospel I preach is not of man. No man taught me this." But he said. He said, it pleased the Father who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal His Son in me. In me. Has He been revealed in you? This has to be by the Holy Spirit. John 4, 16. Jesus said, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will take the things of mine and show them unto you. He says that twice there in that chapter. 
And so he said he revealed him in me. And he said, I did not confer with anyone. I didn't go to their Bible school. I didn't take their test. I didn't, you know, all this. He went for three years to Arabia. Uh, he's, he's out there. Finally, he said, after 14 years, I went up to Jerusalem. That's chapter 2. And he said he's conferred with them just for a short time. And he said, and he, you know what he said? He said, they added nothing to me. That's kind of harsh, harsh, rough, isn't it? They're the big, they're the big guys. <laughs> they said they added nothing to me. Um, I, I want to be careful. I believe in authority, and we've talked about that. Uh, Randy talked about authority here. We we should do that. The Bible says, "Obey them that have to rule over you," and th- that they can do it with joy and not with grief, because that'd be bad for you. So, let's go back here to this. Um, God's looking for a person, looking for a body of people, not to do things for Him, but a people that He can work through. Every I don't know about, there's other ministers in here I know, but every time I'm going to get behind this pulpit and in dealing with someone on a personal basis, my prayer is, and, and my goal is, my intention is that God speak through me, work through me. It has to be that way. I'm not up here to put a show on. I go home first. Go home and pet my goats. You know, do something. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we were we were on our way to Watertown. It's about 88 miles from my wife's home. Praise God, we got a contract on it now. And uh, I, I, this thing came over me. I wanted to hide. I did not want to go there and preach. I, I'm not. I wanted to hide. And uh, so strong. And I told my wife, this is, this is, I'm battling this thing. Turn around, we're going, you know, we'll go back. But we got there, and uh, when he gave the service to me, I, I'm trying to hear what God's saying. I'm trying to sense what he's doing. You understand? You want to follow him. I've been places, I've been in services where they would not give the Holy Spirit an opportunity to move. I'm being I'm telling you the truth. You watch it. They've got it all lined out and they're going to make sure the Holy Spirit doesn't move. I read a, a book and, and a prominent a leader in our denomination that I belong to, he said, I will not allow anything in my church that might offend a potential member. And man, you have lost it right there. Thank God that the, that the people in the upper room didn't feel that way. Thank God. You got this thing. Oh, they've got it all. It's all messed up. You know, it's all backwards. It's, they've lost it. I, I'll tell you another thing. I was in a meeting one time, and, and there was uh, a youth meeting, and a, a lady gave a message in tongues, and the pastor immediately said, Now you pray for the interpretation. You've got to give it pressure in her to give the interpretation. You know why he did that? I know why he did it, because he couldn't. So he put it back on her. See, cover it up because he couldn't. She couldn't. And probably anyone that might, God might have used. Here's what happens if there's a mess. And we've almost lost this, haven't we, in our assemblies, our, our churches. But, and, and there's so much value. Why does God, he, why does God do it? Well, let, let's remember this. He takes the foolish things to confound the wise. If that's the way God wants to do it, that's the way it needs to be. I'm not smarter than God. Let's do it like He says. But uh, if anyone had been there that had it, see, He already cut them out anyway because He's telling this woman she's got to do it. But when there's a message in tongues, the Holy Spirit is is going through the congregation to find someone that will be obedient, that will yield. He said we have to prophesy according to the faith we have in Romans. And all these gifts work by faith, folks. You have to have faith. You've got to have some confidence. God has told me to say things. I said, oh, Lord, I can't say that. <laughs> you know, you're having a battle saying it, to say it. But you obey. Now, and, and I will say this. There's been times I've given people a word. There's a man standing over here one time here at this camp. And I gave him a word. And the next day he's back up here and I'm praying for him. And I gave him a word. He said, that's not what you said yesterday. 
and he starts arguing with me. You know? Well, praise God. They argued with Jesus. They argued with, you know, whatever. Uh, praise God. you got to know where you stand in this. You've got to know that you can hear from God. My sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. You've got to be able to discern when it's the voice of God, whether it's speaking to you or someone else. I will say this. If a, if a minister's ministering and Christ is not in that ministry, in that sermon or teaching, I don't want to hear it. Paul said, I have determined to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And over and over he says, we preach Christ. We don't preach social justice. We don't preach financial security and all the other things that people are putting out there. We preach Christ. Why? Because we're complete in Christ. Scripture says in Colossians, we're complete in Christ. We don't need anything else. Well, we need that. No, we don't add anything to Christ. And you don't add Christ to your life, to what you are. He has to become your life. When Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then will you appear with Him in glory. So we don't add anything. That's why we preach Christ. He's the answer to everything. You used to see that on church buildings and all Christ is the answer. Now you see all kinds of other things up there. We're going by this Catholic church coming here. And it, what did it say? Holy Trinity or Holy Ghost something church. And right under it said golf at such and such a time. You know? Oh my. Well, uh, just think of some of these names that people are naming their churches. And if yours is named this, I, I see, I don't know that, so I'm not picking on it. But uh, family church. Well, what's that church? who's that church for? The family. Well, why not have it for Christ? Why not, why not gather unto Christ? Is He not enough? You gather unto Him, He'll make that family better. Family Worship Center, uh, all these names they have, you know, this Destiny Church. There's one going toward Dallas from where we're at. Destiny Church, big old church. I'll tell you who your destiny is. It's Christ. You, God wants you to fulfill your destiny. All right. What is your destiny? Romans 8, 28 and 29 tells you. Romans 8, 28. For, he said, For all things work together for good to them that love Him who are the called according to His, His purpose. Right? His purpose. All right. Your, the motor in your truck blows up. It's a whole oh, praise God. It's going to work my God. I'm probably going to get a new truck. No, you may be walking. <laughs> That's right. The next verse, 29, says, For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might his son might be the firstborn among many brethren. What is God making all things work together for good? What is that good? That we be conformed to the image of his son. It's not so that you're rich and pretty and, and famous and everybody likes you and life is of peaches and cream and all that. If anything, life... In the, this, to the flesh it's going to be hard it's got to be hard on the flesh you know what your number one enemy is first it's self self the next is the flesh self how do you deal with the self he said you deny it daily you can't run away from self folks it's there what do you do with the flesh which works through self? What do you do with the flesh? You mortify it. You put it to death with its passions and its the lust thereof, the Scripture says. And we all got flesh in here. Don't we? You know what? Um, okay, so the two men on the road to Emmaus, their hearts burned within them as Christ talked to them and opened the Scriptures to them. Revelation. In Romans chapter 1, what do you read? Men burning in their heart, their lust burning in their hearts. What do you what do you have? What do you want? Do you want lust burning in your heart? Or do you want Christ and the revelation of Christ burning in your heart? Which is it going to be? What do you got burning in your heart this morning? Oh, praise God. Good afternoon. So God does not want what we can do for Him. Rather, God wants us 
If we could just understand that God wants us, not what we can bring Him, but ourselves, just us. Besides, folks, He's got to break us down and remake us. You know that. He's got to melt us. Let me say this. The script, Jesus said, if we fall on the rock, we'll be broken. But if the rock falls on us, we'll be crushed to powder. So you, we have a choice. Who's the, who's the rock? It's Christ. Now, you can, you can fall on Christ and be broken. Or if you want, then He can fall on you and crush you to powder. So which is it? I just don't know what's happening. I don't understand what's happening to me. You don't want to understand. I, I get pretty hard on that. Some people think I'm a little hard. I, one time I was uh, preaching in a tent. Is uh, The church was under a tent and they had to fold it up after every service or it wouldn't be there when they got back in, uh, in a part of Dallas there. And I, I was asked to come. This is a group we work with uh, feeding and ministering people under the bridges there, the homeless. And so he said, I want you to come and I want you to ask lead people, give them opportunity to repent, and then also pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. The reason he, the Holy Spirit, I've been preaching on the bridge, and this uh, young black man was on his bicycle, and he was really listening. And I felt impressed. I, I, I said, come over here. Come over here. I said, you want the Holy Spirit? He said, yes. <clears throat> so I laid hands on him, and this other pastor, the one that's invited me to his tent church, he, he's got his hand on him. And I'm praying for him. And all of a sudden, that other pastor, he's a Hispanic pastor, he jumps back and says, Hop up, power, go up my arm. You know? Well, <laughs> oh, praise God. There's power in this thing. Maybe you've never felt it, but there is. So he wanted me to come. Impressed, you know, he felt power. Come over here and spread some power. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was praying for a young man in, in the jail one time, and I never saw him before. He's sitting down, and I put my hands on the side of his head, and I prayed for him. And when I stopped, he looked up and said, you got energy. Well, <laughs> it's actually power. The power of God. It's not, he, I have none. You know, you have none. The power of God working through us. He said, you shall receive power Amen. after the Holy Spirit's come upon you. Amen. Power for what? To be a witness unto me. Not power to do things for me. Please. It's power to be a witness unto to become what he is. Because we cannot save people, He can. And if we're expressing Christ, and Christ is being manifest through our mortal body, people will be saved. I, there's nothing. I can't dance hard enough and sing free enough and swing from the chandeliers hard enough to save anybody. But He can. Let's get this straight. Only Christ saves. Amen. That's why we preach Him. Now, and if I don't finish something, don't worry about it. <laughs> if I get off. That means, okay, in in First John, is it chapter 2, we read, he said, you have an unction from the Holy One. That's anointing. And then he goes on down a few verses later, and he said, you have the anointing, same word. It's, 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 it's the same Greek word. You have anointing, and you have... You need not that any man. You don't need any man to teach you, because you have this anointing. You don't need anyone to teach you. Well, what does that mean? If we don't need that, why do we? Why am I standing up here teaching? Why does anybody teach? We can preach Christ, and we must. Paul said, I, "We preach Christ." All right. That's, that's several times in the text. We preach Christ. When you preach the gospel, you're supposed to be preaching Christ. Okay, we preach Christ. We can preach Christ, but only the Holy Spirit can teach Christ. That's what we have to understand. You can't teach Christ into a person. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. We're not the Holy Spirit. We cannot form Christ in a person. Christ is to be formed as we cannot form Christ in a person. We're to grow up in Christ in all things. We can't do that. We could follow them around 24-7. Hey, you did that wrong. You've got to do this. You can't do that. We're to grow up to Christ in all things. We're to come into the full measure of the statue of Christ. We're to be conformed to His image. 
We are to be transformed. Change is the same in 2 Corinthians 3, 18. As we behold Him in the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, revelation to revelation, even as by the Spirit of God. We lost, the, the image was lost in the Garden of Eden. Is that right? Created Man was created in the image of God. Not the form of God, but the image of God. Form, outward form. No man has seen the outward form of God. He said, you cannot see me and live, he told Moses. No man has seen the outward form of God, but we were created in the image of God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He's not saying, hey, look at me, see how I look, this is how God looks. That's not what he's saying. Jesus is in the image of His Father. In fact, the Scripture says He he was the express, exact image of His Father. Exact. Then He could say, if you see Me, you've seen the Father. Men, when your children see you, what do they see? What does your wife see? What does your neighbor see? Women, same thing. What do they see? Can you say, if you've seen Me, you've seen Christ? A wick power to be a witness unto. Become what He is. Changed into His image. The image was lost through sin. In the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. They did not die physically that day, but they died spiritually. What does it mean to lose the image or to die? It means that you can no longer communicate with God. For when He came walking in the cool of the day, the Lord came walking, whether this was Christ or the Bible, it would be Christ walking in the garden. They hid because they lost the ability to communicate with Him. If I cannot touch God, I, I, I said yesterday that there may be periods where we're tried in that and we cannot feel His presence. But if, it, if I can never feel His presence, and you know that's got to be a horrible thing. You know what hell is going to be more than anything? The absence of the presence of God. Don't worry about the flames. (laughs) Worry about that. So, they could no longer communicate with Him. The, the, The ability was lost because of sin. By the way, they never did repent. Not And not at that time. You read that. It's a blame game. No repentance. Right? You look at you look at um, the two men, Judas and Peter. Peter denied the Lord, cursed, said, "I don't know who he is." Jesus turned and looked at him. I know he wasn't clenching his fist at him. He looked at him, and it says he remembered the word of the Lord. You know that's what the Holy Spirit does. He brings back to our remembrance what He's spoken to us, and He brings it at just the right time. Oh, praise God! It's life changing. Life changing. I was telling that lady that came to our church and I prayed for her and I gave her a word. But several days later she came back and said, she was so overcome, she said that was life changing. That's what God will do for you. He will literally change your life. If you can get a word from God, if you're interested in that, get a word from God. Praise God. So they could not communicate with God. They hid from Him. And they lost the image. The image must be regained. We must be changed into the image of Christ. Why? Because we're not in His image anymore. Transform. Our whole purpose, for whom He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. If He knows you this afternoon, His purpose for you, above all other things, is that you be conformed to the image of His Son. That is what He's after. If we fail in that, we fail totally. I'm going to say this. The only thing going to heaven is Christ. The only one He ever said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He never said that about anyone else. I'm well pleased. said it twice. When Jesus came up out of the Jordan River after in obedience being baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him. And then on the Mount of Transfiguration, he said that. If you want him to say that about you, it will only be because Christ has been formed in you. And it's no longer you. 
Galatians 2.20 No longer I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Whose faith? Faith of Christ. Now some translations will change that to in Christ. You've got to be careful about translations. Some of these translators have an agenda. Come on. They do. And they're going to slant it toward what they believe. And tweak it, change it. But it says... The faith of Christ. What's the difference between the faith of Christ and faith in Christ? A world of difference. Faith in Christ is the beginning. But we're to go on until we come into a place where we have the faith of Christ. The more Christ you have, the more of His faith you have. How do we get more Christ? We must decrease so that He can increase. What did, what did John the Baptist say? I must decrease so that He can increase. The more of you that comes out of you, that's laid down, that's crucified, the more He has room to come in to you. Many people sitting on church pews have very little of Christ in them. There are two kinds of people sitting on church pews. Now it's a lot of chairs. Two kinds. Those that know about Christ and those that know Christ. There is a world of difference between knowing about Christ and knowing Christ. Again, the word know or knew, this, this term, Adam knew Eve, intimacy. Paul said in Philippians 3 that I may know him. It's intimacy, not information. What do you want, information or revelation? Information does not change people. That's another thing. Now, I'm listening to someone. Am I? Is this information or is this revelation? We must re- we must receive revelation. The letter kills. The spirit makes a lie. What is the letter? It's the surface of what's in here. I've known people that can quote this word better than I ever could. It's intimidating, in fact. And, I, and I'm, I'm not very good at telling you what chapter and verse. I'll just tell you that. But you know what? That's okay. Because chapter and verses are not inspired. The word is. They put that in later, okay? So, I'm okay. You're okay. <laughs> Praise God. Well, the letter. there's a letter to this word. But there's also a spirit. And when we teach the letter, the facts, the information, it kills. But when we teach the Spirit by revelation, the revelation, it makes a lie. Amen. Praise God. You sit under information long enough without revelation, you will die. Unless you're getting it at home or somewhere. You want to walk out of the house of God or a prayer meeting or whatever with knowing Christ more than you knew Him before. You can't get that by information. <coughs> Praise God. I will say this, and this is I'm just getting out here on a limb. But those that are called really called of God and will follow that calling correctly and seek God will have revelation. Those that have called themselves will have information. Now, the difference between information and revelation. Praise God. Outward, the outward revealing of Christ will never change anyone. It's the inward revelation that changes us. That's why 2 Corinthians 3, that's why it says that when we behold Him as in a mirror, we're looking at Him, we're changing the same image. But that's inward because Paul said, It it pleased the Father to reveal His Son in me. In me. Is He being revealed in you? Let me say something. I can read this book and never have Him revealed in me. This book, in a sense, is an outward revelation of Christ. Because it's the letter. But if it can become the Spirit and become revelation, it will be inward and it will change me. Praise God. 
when I was in uh, growing up in Sunday school, we would get a free kite if we learned Psalm 1. It's the only whole chapter I ever learned because I sure wanted that kite. <laughs> and I learned it. And I still know some of it, but I'm, I, can, I can stand here and tell you it did not change me. I said it did not change me. The inward revelation of Christ. I didn't even know what this was. Folks, I passed through a long time and didn't know what it was. The inward revelation of Christ. Didn't know it. it didn't know it at all. Spoke in tongues, danced in the Spirit, run the aisle, whatever you, you know, fall out in the Spirit. All those good things. And, and yet didn't have the inward revelation of Christ. And struggling, struggling, struggling. Amen? In fact, I, you, it's obvious I'm not doing that uh, message, but... Um, Praise God. Romans 7. You want to look in Romans 7. What is Romans 7? Some people try to say it's Paul before he got saved. That's not so. Paul is expressing his struggle to live right, righteously. He says, "When I, I know what's right and I want to do it, but I can't do it. He said, I find myself doing what I don't want to do. And and I don't do what I want to do. And it, 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 it's just, you read it, it's almost painful. Well, have you been there? Amen? I was going, I want to do right. And I think I got it together now. I've tweaked it a little better. You know, last time, if I'd have just done this, it wouldn't have happened. So this time I'll be careful and do that. But then the devil comes this way. See? Let me say something. In John 8, the Scripture says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. A little further down, I believe it's maybe verse 35. Whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Understand there's a difference between setting free and making free. So well, why is that so important? Because it's the spirit of the, of, of, the, of the Word. You can you can set a buzzard free and he's still going to be a buzzard. Is that right? Just because you set him free does not make him something different from a buzzard. But if Christ makes you free, it's different from being this... Uh, and this is why I want to say this. We come and we want... There's things in our life that are... We want to be free from, right? We want deliverance. Why? Well, it could be a lot of reasons. You're afraid you're going, to, you're, you're going to lose your marriage, lose your job, you're embarrassed, you don't want to go to jail. Uh, I don't know. It's painful. All these reasons we have, we want to have deliverance, right? God And He does. And some of those are purely, I'm saying something, purely selfish reasons. We want deliverance without the deliverer. Do you hear that? Uh, let, me, let me tell you something. You may fool mama, but you ain't going to fool God. You're not going to fool Him. But we come and we want to be delivered from some things. But we don't want to really I surrender all. This is the end of part A. Please play part B. Thank you. Our website is www lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home.